51 people were murdered in the mosque attacks in Christchurch, New Zealand. Then 23 were killed in an El Paso, Texas Walmart. And more recently, 10 black people are dead following the Topps grocery store shooting in Buffalo, New York. All the gunmen were reportedly motivated, at least in part, by the Great Replacement Theory. For the evil did come to Buffalo. It's come to all too many places. Manifest in gunmen who massacred innocent people in the name of hateful and perverse ideology. So what is the Great Replacement Theory? Let's get this straight. The idea was nothing new at the time, but in 2011, a French ethno-nationalist coined the Great Replacement Theory in his book by the same name. He claimed the liberal elite were committing genocide by replacing native white Europeans with non-white immigrants. White supremacists adopted it in the U.S., asserting that the American liberal elite wanted lax immigration laws to encourage more immigrants into the country. That way, they'd replace white voters. And when they say liberal elite, they're sometimes talking about Jews. So there's some anti-Semitism mixed in there, too. Now, there is some truth at the root of this theory. Stay with me here. The racial makeup of the U.S. is changing. The 2020 census shows that while the white population is still the largest, it decreased by more than 8% since 2010. The multiracial population has grown by more than 270%. Pew Research Center data backs this up, showing the immigrant population steadily expanding since 1965. They estimate the community will hit 78 million by 2065. I asked Alex Narasta, a political science expert with the Cato Institute, how immigrants traditionally vote. The evidence is that most first-generation immigrants, that is the immigrants themselves, uh, tend to have fairly low voter participation, but when they do vote, they tend to be more likely to vote uh, Democratic. Democrats, of course, are happy to accept those votes. That's obvious in their extension of voting rights to non-citizens in New York City. It's just one example of how Dems have celebrated the changing American demographic for years. Demographics is destiny. Demographics is destiny. Demographics is destiny, right? The country is changing. The phrase demographics is destiny encapsulates this belief that this emerging demographic will automatically translate into more blue votes in the future. But that part's not necessarily true. Demography is a huge factor. It drives a lot of things. It structures the terrain. It must be taken account of. Uh, it must be reckoned with. But to say that it's destiny is just wrong. It's not, it's not the case. And I hope there are no Democrats out there who think this. There are. But there's more to the story. By allowing more immigrants into the country, the Democratic Party theoretically turns off a bunch of working class voters who would have voted blue. Also, according to Narasta, immigrants tend to become more conservative the longer they're here in the U.S. And finally, the children of immigrants vote like any other citizens. It's just a general story of assimilation over time. In the same way that in the 19th century, Irish Americans were overwhelmingly democratic. But then in the 20th century, they started to shift to be more um, like other Americans, that they split their votes between the two major political parties. And we're seeing that trend right now occur with immigrants and their kids from Latin America and Asia. So all this is to say the shift in U.S. demographics is real. It's just that the right and the left are framing it in different ways. For some on the left, it's demographics is destiny. And for some on the right, it's the Great Replacement Theory.